You are now tuned in to the network. The YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simpler language. And today's topic is compare physical interface and cabling types, specifically single mode fiber, multi mode fiber, and copper. This is a topic in the uh, Cisco's CCNA exam. Go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from and where we are headed. All right, so this is the exam blueprint that we look at uh, pretty much every video. You know, we just kind of going down through each one of these bullet point uh, bullet points here of this exam guide. This is exam code 200-301. Again, this is version 1.0. This is not the first iteration of the exam. They just kind of restarted over with the version numbers. We covered in the last video all of these network topology architectures. Today, we are going to cover the physical interface and cabling type, specifically single mode fiber, multi mode fiber, and copper, right? So let's go ahead. We're going to start off with talking about fiber. This is a uh, deficiency that I have in my diet and something that I need to make sure that my bowel move. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant to talk about. That's the wrong fiber. The fiber that I meant to really talk about here is let's go ahead and take a look at these slides real quick. Fiber is a basically it's a type of uh, cabling that you that we use, but the signal goes through lights, right? So the official definition fiber optic cable is a type of cabling that uses glass fiber as a medium through which to transmit light. So you see these little like these little they're basically like little small strands of glass really and light passes through it. And yes, believe it or not, the packets and information that we send across fiber, they get transmitted through lights. And it's amazing to me because how does our information travel through light, right? It's crazy. We talked about something similar to this in the Wi-Fi videos that I was covering, the Wi-Fi topics. Remember we said that uh, this information can be passed through signals in electromagnetic radiation, right? Well, with fiber optic cables, we pass our packets, our, our information, goes our data goes through fiber with lights now there's different types of fiber that's out there right the two types that we are going to obviously talk about are single mode fiber and multi-mode fiber now single mode fiber is defined as this type of fiber that works well with transmitters like lasers that emit a single angle of light into the core of the cable allowing for a smaller core in comparison to multi-mode fiber cables now single mode fiber is usually the jacket is like yellow cabling just like this i don't have well actually i've got multi-mode here but anyways uh the single mode fiber one thing we know that i can tell you is that it travels further than uh multi-mode fiber it, and i'll show you why it does that but also the core or like basically kind of like we'll think about it like a pipe but the pipe is really small right and that small pipe is where the light needs to pass through. Now, because of how small it is, and because the laser goes straight through, it goes further. That's why single mode fiber goes further. We're, we'll even break this down a little further in these next couple slides here. Now, let's break down the anatomy of a single mode fiber, right? Well, this is actually pretty much the same thing as multi-mode fiber as well, but we've got these four pieces of, uh, of, of fiber, right? In the middle right here, we've got this little line right here. This little middle piece right here, that would be considered the core, right? This is where the light actually passes through it. It goes right through this little little piece right here that's called the core, right? And the core is defined as a cylinder of glass or plastic that runs along the fiber's length. So we've got the core that goes all the way through the middle just like this, and that's where the laser passes through, through that core. Now, single mode fiber, the core is really small, right? And as you can see right here, the diameter or the size of the, of the uh, single mode fiber is measured in microns, right? This little symbol right here, that's microns. And it's basically nine microns in diameter. And just to kind of give you a comparison, the average human hair size is basically, the diameter of human hair is about, it's about 80 something, like 85 microns. So think about how small the fiber core is if it's nine microns, right? Isn't that crazy? That's how small and how like, microscopic it is but the laser passed through and all of our data passes through it and again single mode fiber it travels really far because of this right then we've got the second part right here which is called the cladding and the cladding is defined as one or more layers of material of lower refractive index in intimate contact with a core material of higher refractive index what the hell does that mean right 
basically the the smaller the core, right? The less space it has to travel and stuff, right? Or the less space it has, right? So we don't want to get I don't want to get too deep into you know refractive index. Well, that's not something we really need to know about for the exam, but just know that the smaller the core, right? Because it's single mode fiber, it travels really far, right? We've also got the buffer, which is this yellow part right here, number three. That's defined as it's used to encapsulate one or more optical fibers for the purpose of providing such functions as mechanical isolation, protection from physical damage, and fiber identification. So this part right here, added layer of protection for the fiber, it's like putting a second condom on. So I have to be a little X-rated right here, but basically it's another piece uh, to cover the uh, the cladding, and it, which also covers the core, right? Because the core is in the middle, right? And then this last piece right here, which is probably what you're most familiar with, if you pick up a piece of fiber. Now this right here is multi. No, actually this is, until this is copper right here. This is multi mode fiber. I don't have any single mode fiber here, but anyways, the jacket would be basically the outside part of the of the fiber, right? This surrounds the inner layers with plastic for outer protection, basically. So this part right here is just the outer jacket. Now, when we break down how the light travels and what it looks like for single mode fiber, it says here, this, the relatively small core found in single mode fiber allows one path of light directly down the center of the core. This keeps the signal intact for distances in excess of tens of miles. Now, again, like I said, this is measured in microns and single mode fiber is usually uh, measured at nine microns, right? So we got the red laser light right here that's travel in one single path, just like this. And it's really, 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 really far for single mode fiber compared to multi-mode, which we'll get further in depth than that. But again, the light travels just in a straight line, just like that. That's single mode light and single mode fiber. That's how you're gonna remember it. It just goes in straight, right? That's how I remember it at least. S, for it goes into a straight line. That's how the light travels in single mode fiber. This is in contrast to multi-mode fiber, which is a type of optical fiber mostly used in communication over short distances. Now, this is how I remember it. Short, M for midget, right? So M, multi-mode or midget, it's over short distances. So it does not travel as far as single mode fiber, right? Such as within a building or on a campus. Multimode links can be used for data rates up to 100 gigabits per second. Multimode fiber has a fair, fairly large core diameter compared to single mode fiber. Remember, single mode fiber has that really small core. Multimode fiber has bigger size cores, which I explained earlier, and I'll show you what the sizes of those are. Has a fairly large core diameter that enables multiple light modes to be propagated and limits the maximum length of transmission link because of modal dispersion. What the hell does that mean, right? Well, because of the fact that I'll show you how the light travels, but because of this, it does not travel that far. And that's how I remember it, right? Multi-mode M midget. I forgot to change this part right here, but this is basically multi-mode, right? We talking about multi-mode here, not single. The jacket is pretty much the same or the anatomy is pretty much the same. Just know that the core, this part right here, on multi-mode is a little bit bigger. As we can see right here, we've got two types of multi-mode sizes. There's 50 microns, right? And there's also 62.5 microns in diameter. And again, when you compare it to the size of the average human hair, the average human hair is about 80. Well, I got nappy hair, so it's pretty thick. I got 4C hair, you know, curls up and everything like that. Pretty nappy, can't get, through, can't get my pick through it. But anyways, the average human size hair Human hair size is about 80 to 85 microns, right? So you compare that to multi-mode fiber, which is about 50 to 62.5 microns. That gives you the idea of how, you know, small the core is for multi-mode fiber. Now, the light in multi-mode, remember it does not travel as far, so it's short as a midget, M, right? The light travels just like this right here. It bounces. It goes up and down, and that's what they meant by modal dispersion. So the light kind of like, it's not refraction or anything like that. It just kind of bounces up and down like that. And the other light travels just like this too. So because of this, it does not travel very far. Now you would think, okay, well, why would I want cabling that does not travel very far, right? Well, for one, the multi-mode I believe is, is, is cheaper than single mode fiber. So it depends on what, you know, lengths you or what cable runs you're trying to do. That will let you know, you know, whether you need to use multi-mode fiber or single mode fiber. One's more expensive, one travels further, 
So it just depends on what type of application you're trying to use it for. The relatively large core allows light to travel both straight down the center or to bounce from side to side in a zigzag pattern. Light traveling from side to side takes longer going down a fiber than light traveling straight so the signal at the end of the fiber is dispersed. This dispersion effect does not become significant until the signal has traveled long distances such as a mile or more or when data bits are packed close to each other. So again, the light travels up and down just like that, right? But it just does not, it's not as effective when it's very, 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 very far like that. So when you need really far lengths, obviously you're gonna use single mode fiber as opposed to multi-mode fiber. Here's just the comparison between the two. Multi-mode, it bounces up and down just like this. Does not travel very far, right? We've got the core. If you look right here, see how the core is really big compared to the single mode fiber, which is nine microns, right? So it's a little bit smaller, but also the light in single mode fiber goes a little longer, or, or it goes straight, right? Because of S, remember we said that S? So it goes straight and it goes a little further, right? As opposed to multi-mode fiber, which the, another way to remember it, right? It goes up and down just like this, M. And it's also short as a, what? Midget, <laughs> right? I am not baby. I'm 22 years old. So it does not go as far as single mode fiber, which just goes straight S in a straight line and goes a little bit further. And again, the core is smaller at nine microns as opposed to single or multi-mode fiber, which has a bigger core and it's at either 50 or 62.5 microns. Now we've got the different types of fiber. Now we want to talk about the exact lengths right here. We've got 1000 base SX, which I believe SX stands for short range and then LX stands for long range. Yes, there's different, there is multi-mode, right? But there's that's a longer range multi-mode, uh, which travel, which is at about 1800 feet. And then there's a uh, multi-mode, which is also 1800 feet, which is kind of odd. So maybe you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that's what I thought SX and LX stood for long range versus short range. But it says here that they're both at 1800 feet. So, you know, maybe I need to do more research on that, but I got this chart here from the official certification guide. Then we've got 1000 base LX, which I figured was long range as well. Again, that's it's nine microns, it's single mode fiber, and it travels at 3.1 miles, right? So that's further distance than multi-mode fiber. Now, this type of media is what we're most familiar with. You're most likely gonna have this at your home, which is copper, right? So unshielded twisted pair is one type of copper cabling that we use. They also call it UTP, which is short for un unshielded twisted pair. And the reason why they call it that is because all the pairs are not shielded, right? And then they're twisted. So they're named as they are, right? So they're twisted just like this right here, right? And then they're pairs. So this is a blue and white, right? They're a pair. And then we've got a brown and white right here and a brown white that has a stripe. So we've got four pairs here, as you can see right here, it says there four pairs of UTP cabling, right? And these are the types of the colors that match with each other. Now there's two standards, right? I believe it's 568A and 568B. We don't really need to memorize that for the, the uh, you know CCNA exam, but just know that there's two types of cabling. But usually there are four pairs just like this. They just come in, you know, uh, slightly different colors. They change the pairs. I believe it's one and three and two and six. UTP is the most common cabling, as I mentioned, used in computer networking. Modern ethernet is the most common data networking standard can use UTP cables. Twisted pair cabling is often used in data networks for short and medium length connections because of its relatively low cost compared to optical fiber and coaxial cables. So basically UTP or copper is cheaper than fiber. Fiber, like I said, you know, it goes in further distances and stuff like that and you'll get faster transmission rates and bandwidth with fiber, but it's relatively cheaper. That's why most likely in your home, your home is wired with copper or unshielded twisted pair of cabling. One way you can remember the colors if you really want to. I seen this, on, I believe on Twitter, where this lady took the exam, well, it was the Network Plus exam, she wasn't taking the CCNA or whatever, and she painted her colors, her painted her nails with the, uh, with the standards of UTP. Yeah, and then there was a blue and blue white right there, and green and green white is one pair that go together. Uh, and then we've got these two orange pairs, but anyways, I would re recommend do y'all doing that. Just do your best to try to remember these colors. <laughs> Anyways, these are the standards for UTP cabling. We've got 10 base T, which is also known as Cat3 cabling. It's not as fast as 10B. I believe that's only like 10 gigs per second or something like that. 
not 10 gigs. Yeah, about 10 megabits per second. I can't remember. But uh, these are the lengths right here. Maximum lengths for most of them are 328 feet. And uh, the standards are, they're, they're defined in category. So we've got 10 base T, that's category three. And category five, this is probably the most common you'll see. Cat 5E, I bet you in your house right now, you've got Cat 5E cabling. That's probably the most common application when it comes to unshielded twisted pair of cabling. Again, that's also at 328 feet. Notice that these are four pairs right here. These are four pairs. And that has the four pairs, just like this right here. We've got the, we've got one pair, two pairs, three pairs, and this is the fourth pair right here, right? That is all I got for y'all today. This is just a quick one down of single mode fiber versus multi mode fiber. I guess I forgot to show y'all. This is a uh, an example. I don't know if y'all can see this, but this is an example of uh, multi mode fiber right here. It's usually in this little aqua green jacket, just like this right here. And this is just uh, an LC connect, LC to LC connector. I've got uh, connected to my switch. I forgot to show y'all. I didn't have single mode, but this is multi-mode fiber right here. I don't know if y'all could see if there's any kind of markings right here that let us know what size of the uh, micron it is, but it don't look like it. No, it don't. But either way, this is multi-mode fiber and this is how it looks like. That is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. That is my IG. Follow me on either of those social media platforms if you want to connect with me on a more personal level. Leave me a comment below if you want a little bit more information or if you have any comments or questions or anything like that. Please like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to know when these videos come out. I'm going to try to do these videos as much as I can. I know I keep saying that, but you know, I've got projects and stuff daily at work and I'm trying to keep up with this plus this YouTube channel plus my daughter plus my on and off. I'm not even going to talk about that, but y'all just go ahead and comment, like, subscribe to the network.